and it is, I think, a Monday morning. Just woke up. Um, we'll get we'll get things rolling here later in the day. Mic stands, three little amplifiers, computer, a couple of monitors. I'll go over the guitars. Little small rack of effects. And we've got some sound panels in the room. I'll show you all this stuff. I'll show you all, all of this stuff. I'd like to take you on a tour of the substation studio location. Here. Studio is small in a 14 by 15, 14 by 14 study room. Equipment is minimal. Minimal effects, just a few guitars, basic stuff, three or four microphones. I'll go over in the pieces in detail, as will V-Man and the other, the other guys, just to give you a, a quick 10 cent tour. You think you could be a little more pacific? I mean, maybe I mean pacific, specific? And our goal here is to record some good tunes, some tasty tunes. And who knows, maybe, they'll, maybe there'll be a surprise or two. But the important thing always about this, this music stuff, home recording, the important thing about home recording, you have to have fun, okay? Make it fun, enjoy yourself. With this basic substation studio location here, Goal is to lay down some some good tunes, some good tracks. We'll we'll try to do the best we can, but most importantly, we're going to try to have some fun and get some at least some good skeleton tunes down on disc. Some go afar to burn incense for peace at no risk. Others go to substation studio location to burn tracks to disc. So, have some fun, lay down a few good tracks here, and maybe we'll all learn something. <sighs> good morning to y'all. Uh, definitely need some coffee today. Now, if that coffee done gets him motivated, I hope he tends to trimming them toenails because I've seen them nails without them little kung fu slippers on, and believe me, he could peel a potato with them things. He's got to get himself a pair of boots. Oh, yeah. On rice paper, big cowboy boot, live big footprint. Sometimes, when Mr. Vig, you know, he usually drinks that coconut water, but sometimes he'll drink a coffee, you know, a big coffee in the morning. Sometimes he'll get a little irritable. Yeah, like, he tells me what to do or how to say, you know, he tells me sometimes, corrects my sentence structure. You know, I'm the English professor around here, and he's telling me how to pronounce certain things or where the comma goes in a sentence. I don't know about that. I think it's that coffee makes him a little It helps him work through a lot of issues and problems, but that, the downside is he gets a little ticky sometimes. You should hear him and V-Man go at it. Now, this is one of our uh, little synthesizer toy kind of gadgets. It is a stylophone. It comes with a little stylus. It's 
probably got a little circuit board inside. It, it has an audio out. You can see frequencies along the bottom edge. It has an on-off switch and a vibrato. And it also has uh, three different levels. There's a low, mid, high, is that what it is? One, two, three. And this, this little gadget's been around for some time. Not too many people are familiar with them. It's really just a noisemaker. And folks that have used these in the past, David Bowie, I think on the song Space Oddity, might have used this, you might have heard this kind of sound. That type of. Here's the sounds that it does make uh, while, we're, while we're noodling with it. And if we add some vibrato. So it's just a, a scale and you can make some funny noises with it. And maybe I'll use it. Um, it's it's inexpensive. It's an inexpensive toy. Um, David Bowie used it, I believe, and I think Kraftwerk was another band. Uh, I think I've read that in the uh, little insert that came with the package. Anyway, this is the stylophone. In terms of our our rack effects that we have here at the substation, this this really isn't even a, a, a rack, a true rack device. I've got it. I've got it taped in here. I'll put some Velcro on that so it holds better. But this is a DTAR, let's see right there, DTAR Solstice. It is a, an acoustic guitar preamp, at least that's what I use it for, and that's what it's built for. It has two channels, so the, the nice thing about this is that you can, uh, in like for instance, in the Laravee Acoustic that I run into this, it has a K and K uh, uh, mic and an undersaddle pickup in it, I believe. So with a TRS cable, I can run into channel one and it splits the signal. So I can, you know, um, do EQ on each signal coming in from the guitar. It's basically a, a stereo signal that uh, is received here to the solstice. I, I found these, I have another one of these in the main, in the main studio and I, I, use, I use it when I do play with the Laravee uh, for live gigs. I usually run acoustic guitar into this and then from here either go into, uh, into like the NL1 Bose Compact for, for a PA or I go into um, TC Electronic Spatial Expander uh, out to a PA system, something like that. But this this is a, I, I found these via Andy McKee, who's a, a, a tap type of guitarist, the way Michael Hedges, uh, in, in, along the same line as Michael Hedges. And he used to use, or maybe still does, use a DTAR. That's where I dug them up. They don't make these anymore, but they're a really good piece of, uh, of equipment. I, I love them. I think they're, uh, if, if you want to EQ your acoustic guitar really nice, good piece of equipment. The downside, of course, is you, you have to do some tweaking. It's, it's not like having your, uh, you know, your preamp right on your guitar like, like a tailor would have, and it's, it's more simple that way. This is a little more complex, but you can get some nice, nice warm acoustic guitar sounds out of a, a Solstice. Next up, um, on this mini rack here at the mini substation location, we've got a Furman what is it? Uh, do, 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 do. There it is. It is an M-AX2. I, I have other Furmans at the main that I use for at the main studio and for, for performing uh, gigs. This has one up front, one outlet up front, and I think eight in the back. Power conditioner, power surge protection. Furman makes good good equipment. Okay, next up we have the. Elisis MIDI Verb 4. I've got another one of these back at the main studio also. This one we picked up off of Reverb and it's in really good shape. You can still find these out there. Uh, they're one of my, my favorite uh, rack, rack devices for, for you know, modulation effects, delay, things like that. Really good reverb. 
And I was using what, the FX2000, I think it is. I did have that here. I ordered that and plugged it up, but it was way too noisy. It's, it was an inexpensive, si similar to this, and it, it also had distortion in it too, but it was just, just had a lot of hum and I wound up returning it and went back to, you know, things that work for me, um, the MIDI Verb 4. And next up, we have the Personas Quantum, um, which uses uh, the lightning connection. It's got ins, you know, for this is plugged up to our mics right up front. It has inputs and outputs and everything in the back. I should, I should give you a back view of it also, but. Um, and this works with Studio One software, and which we have on our PC. We bought this guy with us out here on the trip. And this, this is an inexpensive one, two, three, four, uh, four, four section uh, mini rack. Uh, again, inexpensive. Used, brand new, used, new. So out of the four, two of these, these um, devices are used. Um, these two were purchased off of Reverb. That is it for our, our rack uh, effects. Now, I'm here to make sure that they record some, some good country songs. This is a Yamaha MG-10XU uh, mixer. We've been using one of these to, to perform live uh, for the last two, three years probably. They're nice little small mixers, good for studio and performing live. They've got onboard effects. They've got phantom power. This fits in a little bag and I can throw it in the front seat and it sets up quick, especially for you know gigs that are either solo or trio gigs and here, we've, we've got one of these here in the studio just in case we want to run several tracks in and uh, throw them into the quantum, run them into the quantum. Anyway, that's our little mixer from Yamaha. This is an Akai MPK Mini keyboard controller. Inexpensive, off of Amazon. We don't have the space here in the, in the mini substation studio location. This works directly with, you know, Studio One from, from Personas. I can control a gazillion different keyboard sounds from, from this control and from these keys. And, uh, you know, the controls, the, the knobbers can all be mapped. And it, of course, it comes with its own software too, with its, you know, um, uh, one of them is called Velvet. There's piano tones and different synth noises. So it's just a, a nice little uh, addition to the studio if I need to add trumpets or strings or fiddles to some of the songs, which I probably will. We'll use this little guy. Let's get Dr. Shank to go over the different effects pedals that we have here in the substation. Hello there. Um, Mr. Big asked me, Dr. Shank, to talk a little about, about the pedals, the effects pedals, and all mini pedals, by the way, that, that he's going to be using, we're going to be using here in the studio. Um, I guess first off, well, there's the magic tuner, okay? I think we, yeah, we did a, vid a video on him, a couple of tuners. That's the one that featured Golfton the Wizard. I almost forgot his name. Golfton, yeah, he's, he's a big tall guy with a big long beard, long hair, gray hair. Almost looks like an older V-man. But you know what? He has a big chain too. He looks He's very mysterious. Well, anyway, let's stop talking about him and get back to us X pedals. The magic tuner. It's just a tuner and serves its purpose well. Okay? Let's get it out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, next up. Oh. 
Uh, yeah, we talked about it. I was going to say, well, what, what manufacturer? But you can look at the older video. This is the Cyclone Loop. This is an eye set pedal. Oh, hang on a sec. All right, I'm back. It's a Kugo. Okay, that's who's the manufacturer is. Kugo, man, you, a Kugo. If I could talk, my tongue's getting wrapped up. Magic Tuner, Mod 1 from Kugo. Ooh. The Cyclone Loop from my set. This is a looper, okay? It'll be used in some of those five minute blues licks videos that Mr. Vague likes to do. And it'll be used uh, for rehearsing and practicing and playing some loopy, 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 loopy. Do I repeat myself? Loopy, loop stuff. Let's get rid of that one. Hang on. Oh yeah, the Kamai's vintage overdrive pedal. Okay, true bypass, Kamai's. I remember we talked about one of the phase shifters was the Kamai's too on an earlier video. And it's a nice little pedal. I like the color, it's kind of a green, I like that, okay? I like green as you can see. Um, Last but not least, we had that we had that distortion pedal shootout. Looky here. This is the iSet distortion pedal here on this side, and the Amazon Basics distortion pedal on this side. He wound up keeping both of them. I thought Mr. Vig's heart was set on on the iSet, but he wound up keeping the Amazon Basics too. Maybe he likes the two different distortion sounds that they that they supply, and hopefully he'll be able to use them in some nice recording lead guitar work or something like that, you know. Okay, that's about it for the for the pedals. I think V-Man, he's over there. You okay? No. Oh, he's in another world. He's over there looking, fiddling with the guitars. Okay, I'll let him talk about the guitars, and it was nice it was nice um, telling you about the effects pedals. Bye-bye. I heard that, I heard that there long-haired fella is gonna talk about the guitars. Well, I hope he gets a haircut before it does. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now this one, this is new, this is a, let's see if you can all get a picture. This is a mini, mini bass guitar. It is a Cordoba, okay? No, it ain't got no Corinthian leather. I know what you're thinking. It's a little four-string guy. Uh, it's probably a laminate mahogany type body, you know, but... But Mr. Vega's gonna just be able to lay down some bass tracks with this, or maybe I will if he lets me, if I'm lucky. Oh, but... I mean, it's not a, this is an inexpensive little kid's guitar almost. You know what I mean? It does have a pickup in it too. See that? It's acoustic electric. So you know what? This will lay down some bass tracks and hopefully he can make them sound good. If they don't, he can always redo them with the Fender Mustang or whatever later on. But, but for now, Bass isn't one of his finer points. I think that's why, you know. Anyway. Oh, this hair. All right, now, you all know this one, too. This is, oh, let's get the strapper out of there. This is Chi Chi, the Mexican Telecaster, okay? Uh, beautiful guitar, very, it's a really nice little guitar, okay? I think he bought this one right off Oh yeah, Amazon, you just bought this sucker right off Amazon. Right out of the box, perfect. And this is Larry. Larry Larvey, okay. I think it's, what is it, OM, OM3R, I believe. Larvey, working man's guitar. <laughs> working man's. Acoustic guitar. It's got a K and K in it. 
Nice, beautiful sounding guitar. You can listen, listen. Oh, melt me away, baby. And last but not least, this is Epi. Okay, what does he call it? He calls this Terry, I think. This is the Pelham Blue Epiphone 339, okay? Now, you, all of these guitars, get out of there! All of these guitars, as you can see, well, aside maybe from the Laravie, this is a low budget guitar, Chi Chi, the Mexican Telecaster, low budget. You got the mini, the mini bass guitar. Okay, what is it with this hair today? You know, I, oh man, there we go, get out of there. Anyway, let's see, where was I? Oh yeah, these is all inexpensive guitars, and that's what we're gonna work with here, okay? That's the way Mr. Vig likes to do it. All right, I'm into it, I'm ready to, I'm gonna lay myself down some leads, I'm gonna use them distortion boxes that Dr. Shank just talked about. I'm going to do it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to do it, to it, do it, to it, do it. Oh, I like that rhyme. Yeah, you know what? His hair is part of my signature, you know? He keep, that Texas dude keep on telling me to get a haircut. No, you see, this is, this is my, this is, a, this is it, you know? What's he got? He got them cowboy boots and that hat and a funny eyeball. Our headphones are, they are AKG K240s. Same kind of headphone I've been using for the last few decades. We love them. Our near field monitors are Presonus's uh, Eris 3.5s. At our main studio, we have KRKs, a larger I think six inch woofer. These are just little 3.5s, but they're, they're perfect for the smaller substation studio location here. These have had good reviews. I've, I've pumped a few tracks out of them. They, they sound pretty clear. Um, they are, you know, a smaller, smaller speaker. So you're going to, we're going to have to expect a smaller sound from them, but for, for our purposes here, uh, so far, so good. That's Eris 3.5s from Personas. And our PC here, not, nothing much to look at, but it is a custom built PC from the company called Silent PC. And we've been using Silent PC's PCs for also for decades. They're, they make wonderful, uh, versatile, computers that can be used as uh, video workstations, um, DAWs, they, 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 they just, they're super quiet. Now we'll, we'll show you one wall here in the substation studio. We didn't, th this is mainly just to, to keep the noise, some soundproofing and some sound absorption panels. This is uh, one of the far walls here. And you, if you look up into the corner, you can see we put a couple in the corner. You know, we've got a few over here on this wall. The kind of felt panels, the gray, gray toned panels are from Ohuhu. And the sound absorption type uh, foam panels are from Cyveri, um, C-Y-A-V-R-I. Both, both from Amazon and relatively inexpensive, but they help in this room, which is just a square, uh, tall ceiling type of room that echoed a lot. The, the echoes cut down a lot. I, I did not do any kind of uh, reflection point study or anything like that to find out where, where these should have been placed exactly. All I did was put some on the wall and it seemed to work and I was happy. So I didn't, I didn't do any analysis of, of reflection points as far as, as far as the sound absorption goes. Anyway, priority colors, huh? I'm kind of new around here, around these parts and uh, I done met most of the fellas. Uh, a Dr. Shank fella, I uh, struck up a conversation with him 
and uh, he likes to drink tea. I offered him a Lone Star, and he turned me down. He said he wants a cup of tea. Oh, well, interesting folks. I don't want any Lone Star beer. I'm happy with a hot cup of tea, maybe a biscuit. And like I say, if you're sitting outside and the birds are chirping, what more could you ask for? I don't know. Tex likes to ride the horses and drink that Lone Star stuff. It's a wonder he doesn't fall off his horse. And we'll be working with four microphones I have here so far. This is an AKG C3000B. Uh, this is condenser mic used for vocals. The Shure SM57. Versatile. Uh, it could be used to record a guitar amp or for vocals. A lot, of, a lot of performers use these for vocals. You might not know that. You think of the SM50, SM58 as being a standard vocal mic. And we have a couple of 58s back at the main studio, and we've been using the 58s with the Yamaha X, XU Mixer for the last couple of years, too. Before that, I um, sold a lot of solo gigs in, during 2000, 2010 years. Uh, I used an AKG condenser mic for solo shows. Anyway, this is the SM57 from Shure. I'm sure you're pretty familiar with these. The Hot Dog. This is an AKG C1000S. Uh, this will be used to mic acoustic guitar. This came as a set some years ago uh, with, with the 3000. This 1000 came as a set, the two of them together, in a nice, nice little metal box, carrying case, and these have been used by me for recording for some years too. That there spaceship, that spaceship, it looks like one of my Nathan's hot dogs. Oh boy. Lastly, on some of our little mini amps, we're gonna place this little guy, which is a C. Ooh. I am microphone head. It is a C609, good old silver face, from Sennheiser. Anyway, this one will be used exclusively for miking our little guitar amps. So that's it, we have four mics. This Sennheiser, a Shure SM57, and the two AKG mics, the 1000 and the 3000. So we're working with four mics. There's a possibility an SM58 might get thrown into the mix, but I, four mics is plenty for a mini substation studio here. Now our mic stands are K and M's. Made in Germany, five year guarantee. This is the first I've used, I've used K and M's. I, I really like them so far. I mean, I've always used, I've always used Atlas mic stands, which, which, which are the heavy metal solid uh, mic stands that I've, that I've always liked. Uh, but these are, have a lot of adjustable, you can see all the adjusters on there, the little knobbers. Uh, adjuster down here at the bottom. What else can I show? We've got uh, a de-esser or piffer or whatever. We've got the the 1000 here on its own little kind of stand that hooks on to the stand itself, its own little clip-on kind of uh, holder. And what else? What else? Our, our mic cables, for the most part, these orange guys and some of these black ones, I, we've got a lot of cables around here. They're Lix Pros. They are L-Y-X-P-R-O cables. Here's a look-see at the back of the Quantum. Got some MIDI hookups. That white is the uh, Thunderbolt and the Lightning clock. SBDIF. That's our main outs going to the 3.5 Aris Personas monitors. There's some line outputs and our mic line inputs right there. Next, the back of the MIDI verb. 
nothing too special with it inputs outputs and the Furman with regular three prong outlets and here's the back of the solstice the DTAR um, give you a look see at that yeah that oven filler and that there ping pong feller I'm not sure what kind of horse they all rode in on not sure I didn't ride any horse in um, Tex, is, is that what he's talking about? I rode my bicycle, okay? Hey, listen here, cowboy. Tex is too whatever. I didn't ride no horse. I done rode my motorcycle in here, that's right. I ain't riding no horsey in here. I got two wheels. Two wheels, all right? And here we have the Vox AC4 TV, the Hartke HD15 base amp, and the Mono Price Stage Right um, guitar amp, bass amp, guitar amp. And that's our three little amplifiers that we will be using. I'm looking forward to, to noodling with the gadgets in this studio. Should be a lot of fun. Now Bella and I took a little walk and we chatted a bit. Right girl? Did we chat? Yeah. And we both agree that with recording, with home recording, the main, the main goal is to, to have some fun. Okay, that's one. Two, record some songs. Hopefully they're good songs. You, you try, to, try to obtain a degree of integrity and quality in the recordings, but we're not recording geniuses, experts here. We, we're working on in summary. What's up there? In summary, here at the substation recording location, we just want to, we want to record some songs. We want to have some fun. We want to use the, the, the equipment that we have here. We we're using a um, low budget, if you call it that. If a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound? At the substation, studio location, much noise can be found. <laughs>